Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Tracy and I want to get you scrapping and having fun with pretty paper. So today I'm going to share a process video of a page I made with my brand new wild hair kit. So here is the kit that uh, I just had shown in a separate video. If you missed the video and would like to see what came in this kit in detail, you can check out the video right before this one on my channel. I'll also link it in, the, in a card here. And I knew I wanted to scrapbook this picture of my daughter. This was a picture that I had printed up for a, as a potential picture that I'd include in my project life this week. And I decided to make a full page about it because it's just such a great picture. She's got her, th her, um, her tongue stuck out a little bit, which she does when she's really concentrating. And it's really cute. She probably hates that, but uh, I think it's really cute. And I just wanted to capture this photo in a little bit more of a detailed way and maybe include a bit more of the story with it. So you saw me just mat it on that blue and other colored blue polka dot paper that came in the kit. All of these items came in the kit. And then I also cut or I actually tore out a rectangle of the yellow and blue paper. All of these papers came in the wild hair kit and they're from different manufacturers. This one is from Alison Kreft's Capture Life. It's the flip side of that pretty chevron that I like so much. And then the yellow and blue paper is, I think it's from one canoe too? I can't remember. Actually, it's from Stargazer from Dear Lizzie. That's what that uh, really pretty blue and yellow floral paper is. And instead of just having a plain square or rectangle of the blue paper uh, with the with the navy blue squares on it, I decided to tear it into two pieces just for a little bit of extra interest. I, I like to do that sometimes with my very back layer, have it be two overlapped layers of the same paper. Now here I'm thinking about what I might use as my background. I am thinking about maybe using this white cardstock that I just pulled out of my stash, but the more I think about it, the more I really want to use this gray pink fresh studio paper with the, it's, it's not gray, it's white with the gray uh, circles all over it. I really love how it looks with the with the photo and and I think that I'm going to be able to incorporate the circle and the background of it into the design of the page if I use that. So I keep thinking, gee, I wish I hadn't cut a chunk out of that navy blue paper with the lighter blue dots all over it from We Are Memory Keepers. But then I thought, I know what I can do. I've done that before where I've cut a chunk out of something and then wanted to use it to map my project. And I just do a patchwork solution and incorporate that into my design. Now I wish I hadn't cut this paper so that it was, see how one of those circles is one of the edges of that pink fresh paper is a complete, like it goes right up to the edge of the circle. I wish I had cut a bit off of both sides so that it could have two interrupted, like so that it, it could have inter interrupted circles on all four sides is what I'm trying to say. So now here's what I'm going to do to solve my problem of wanting to use this for a background. I just cut a chunk of that other blue paper that's from the Allison Kreft line and that paper shows up elsewhere on my project and then I'm just going to patchwork it together like this and then that corner with the different color of pattern paper is going to be like where my secondary accent goes where my secondary embellishment cluster and I do like this navy blue paper with the lighter blue dots all over it from We Are Memory Keepers I like it enough that I'm going to cut out the center of it I'm using my Stampin' Up trimmer here I have changed trimmers recently I do still really like my cutter pillar crop um, but just with the way I have my scrap room set up lately, it's I, I wanted to switch to a lighter weight trimmer and I will be talking about that in a separate video at some point. Why I made that change and, and uh, just talking about trimmers in general. So here we go. I've decided to put my photo down in the lower left hand corner or kind of like taking up most of the lower left part of the of the page and then have my secondary cluster up in the top right. And I pulled out some stamps. I don't historically do a lot of stamping on my layouts these days. I mean, historically, I guess a, a, 
a while ago, I used to do a lot of stamping on all of my pages, and I've really gotten away from it for the past three or four years, and I'm wanting to go back to it. I have a lot of beautiful stamps in my stash, and I just thought I really ought to be using them, so I'm pulling them out here. This is a set of phrase stamps from Scraptastic. Uh, which used to make scrapbooking kit clubs and now they do other things like planner things. Um, and so I don't, these phrases have phrases in the center with dotted lines on either side of it. And I don't want to use the dotted lines. I just want to ink up the phrases. And so I'm using a gray, it's called Smoky Gray uh, Stampin' Write pen from Stampin' Up. And these pens are designed for using with stamp sets. And so they stamp quite nicely. You just rub your pen over the edge of the um, of the stamp and then it deposits the ink on the stamp and you can stamp quite nicely with it. And I'm not being too particular here. I'm trying to uh, make these phrases go on a curve that's the same as the curve of the circles that I'm stamping them upon. But I'm not being too, too careful about getting my stamping perfect in that uh, I want this to look kind of messy and haphazard as opposed to perfectly stamped and planned out. So the first stamp that I used said, what did it say? This is life. And then the second stamp that I used here said everyday moment, everyday moments. And now this one says start here, maybe around here. around here. Yes, that's what it says. <laughs> and uh, in order to use these markers, you just use the edge, like the side of the brush tip of the marker, just to swipe it across the across the stamp. And so I just tried to make it really random. And I know that it's not 100% even. And I know that I've got this diagonal line going of every, every, um, every one on that diagonal line has has a stamp on it, but that's okay. It's it's random. It's truly random because I really wasn't thinking about the pattern. I just kind of slapped them up very willy nilly. So this last stamp says start here. And I wanted some of them to be going on the circles that go off the page. So that's why I pulled out that last stamp set because I just wanted to add a few. I realized that none of them were really going off the page. Now, I love this vellum, and I'm going to use it in a really different way than I thought I would. So at first, I thought I could cut a rectangle of this and put it someplace, like behind the photo like that, like behind the cluster of papers with the photo. And then I decided, I think I'm going to stamp on this vellum, and I, I'm going to use the crosses. I'm going to cut out the, the vellum crosses. And then with all of the leftover pieces between the crosses, I'm going to stamp. And I'm using dye ink here. I'm not using stays on. And that means I have to be really careful to let this dry. You can stamp on vellum with dye ink, but uh, it does take quite a long time to dry. So I would recommend that you uh, stamp and then leave it for a good long time a little bit longer than you might even think that you need to leave it. I'm using a really warm gray here. It's called Narwhal by Freckled Fun. And I love, I have two inks from Freckled Fun that are gray. I have one that is called Storm Cloud and one that's called Narwhal. And Narwhal is the warmer. It's almost like a grayish. And now I'm being very careful. I'm cutting these out, but I'm being careful to not touch them with my fingers as I cut them out because they are definitely not dry yet. So you see me handling it very carefully. And I'm also kind of trying to keep the intact crosses intact so that I can cut them out and use them on the page. And those light bulbs are so cute. They're from a Kelly Perky set, stamp set. So the lessons learned and then the other stamp that says for a love of learning and then the light bulb, those are all from a Kelly Perky stamp set that uh, it's from the September stamp set from her Project Life kit or pocket kit, whatever you call it. Uh, these little square two by two pads came in my wild hair kit and I really love this one that says you got this. 
I think the color scheme works well. It, it does a nice job of introducing something other than blue and yellow. So there are some pinks as well as blue and yellow in this. And I'm going to use this really cute yellow bow that came in the wild hair kit. Those are from Amy Tangerine. I thought about putting it up there, but no, I'm going to put it down here in this cluster. In just a second, I will realize that I'm zoomed in too close. And I there we go. I'll move it over so you can see it. So I'm going to layer it down in the corner of the photo like that. It says, you got this. And I'm thinking about that just being my title. I am going to painstakingly cut out a whole bunch of these crosses. And this is going to take a lot of time. But I don't typically cut out my process because I don't want it to seem like I know what I'm doing when I don't. So there's a lot of experimenting. So here I just cut out two of them in with the thought of let's just see if this is even going to work. Let's just see if I'm even going to like this. So I started with two and I thought, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll add a third one and that'll give me a better sense of how it's going to look with these scattered all over the layout. And what I've decided to do as I go along is to put them in every one of the circles that have stamping on it. So that random circles will have stamping and a cross on it. And I'm really liking how this looks as I go along. So I'm going to cut off a few more of the squares. I'm being really careful about the light bulbs because I don't, I don't want to touch them because they are still wet. So that's why I cut off some more, some more crosses. And now one tip for cutting out these sorts of shapes is I cut a square around the outside edge of it. And then you can just go in and cut out the little extra squares that are in between the arms of the cross, if, if you know what I mean. That seems to be the easiest way to cut out these squares. I'm sorry that so much of it is happening off screen. I didn't realize that I was still zoomed in. I just get, sometimes I get so kind of caught up in the process that I don't even remember that I'm videotaping myself and that's when I usually forget to zoom in or zoom out. But uh, there, you get to see what I mean here a little bit better. I'm at least holding it in frame. <laughs> I cut it out as a square and then I just kind of snip snip all those little in between areas in between the arms of the crosses. And I think that this looks fabulous. I really, really love how this circle paper looks with these crosses every here and there and the stamps on the on the circles as well. It really takes a paper and makes it something really unique. It's perfect for this page. Now I just cut out some of those phrases from the Kelly Perky stamps that I had stamped with the Lawn Fawn ink. I'm going to put the lessons learned uh, right down here by her notebook and then I will put a love of learning up at the top. So now I'm having a look at these wool half circles and I'm thinking about using them as an accent somewhere but I don't think I know where yet. They are going to make it onto my page, but I'm just not entirely sure where. So I thought I would put a bit of paper up here at the, in the, that top corner where the, where the pattern paper on the matting is different. And that will give like a home for my secondary cluster to live. And I don't know what's gonna be in that secondary cluster yet, but I thought I would just put it up there for now. And what I decided to do was to write some journaling randomly around the page inside of the circles. So this first bit of journaling says, French immersion means much more homework for Liv. And then I'm underlining it. And then I can't decide where to put my next little bunch of journaling. It, I feel like I really love the randomness of the page so far and I don't want to throw it off by adding my journaling in the wrong place so and at the same time my family is kind of making noises upstairs and I'm feeling like I might have to abandon this whole thing and start later pretty soon so I just took a picture so I didn't forget the second bit of journaling says but she loves the freedom that comes in junior high and then I decided to make a visual triangle by adding my third bit of journaling over here on the other side of the photo so that my visual triangle draws your eye right through my photo. Uh, and my third bit of journaling says working hard on math homework is a daily task. 
And now I'm going to add these little chipboard geotags. I love geotags. I know they were very hot several years ago, but I still love them as an item. Like it, I loved them outside of their trendiness. So I loved them before they became trendy and I still love them now that they're not quite as trendy as they once were. And so I was really pleased to get some geotags. I think I've used a good amount of all of my geotags that I've had. So it's nice to have a few more. I think I had a, this exact set of geotags and used them all up in a project. So yay for more of one of my favorite things. So I'm using my Stampin' Up! adhesive here, just a tiny, tiny bit in the center of each of these pluses to uh, stick these down. I do plan to do some sewing over these, and I did know that at this point, but I just wanted them to stay put so I wouldn't have to worry about them uh, moving around. And again, I wasn't sure how much time I would have to scrapbook right now. And so leaving something half done when you have cats is something that's a little risky. So I wanted to glue down as much as I could at this point. It turns out I am going to be able to finish the project in one sitting, but I just wasn't sure if I could or not. Real life scrapbooking here, you don't always have time to complete a full layout in one sitting. And I'm liking how this looks and what am I thinking I'm going to do now? So I, I want to put these wool half dots right here in a line under, under the photo. I think they just fill up that space nicely and add some really nice texture. What I love about these half dots is that they add texture, but they're not really overwhelming to your design. They don't really demand your attention, even though they are quite large and quite dimensional. They're, they're a subtle. It's interesting how they can possibly be so subtle. I have my three quarter inch circle punch here. And remember those light bulbs that I had stamped on the vellum. I'm cutting them out and I at first I thought I would just put them in different places and then I thought there's too much random like I've already got the the crosses are randomly around the page and the journaling is randomly around the page. If I put light bulbs randomly around the page I'm going to end up with a real hot mess going on here. So I've decided to pair my light bulbs with the pluses. I'm not married to the idea yet. I'm just going to trim this down and and glue it down because again I'm not sure if I'm going to have to leave and the reason I trimmed down the paper even though I had originally torn the edge of it is that the that same paper on the layout like amongst the layers is has a cut edge on it so I wanted to have a cut edge on the top so that they so that they're the same I realized that I hadn't actually stamped enough light bulbs for me to do my idea of putting a light bulb on every on every cross so I just took the same Lawn Fawn ink and grab that stamp again and I stamped the light bulbs and now I'm going to let them dry and actually I did leave I went upstairs and ate breakfast and now here I am these are dry and I am going to cut them all out using my three quarter inch punch that's a Marvi Uchida or Uchida I don't know how you say that word but it's a Marvi punch it's very, very old, probably one of my very first scrapbooking supplies I ever bought. And what I've decided to do here is to layer these light bulbs, but not completely centered on the crosses. I'm going to put them so that they're all a little bit off center. And at first I was going to put them down with a teensy bit of, of adhesive. And then I realized, no, you can actually see the adhesive. You couldn't on the crosses because they're black but you can see it on the light bulbs because they're not black. This is my brand new Genome New Home sewing machine. And I'm going to do a video about this sewing machine. So you will hear about how I got it. It has an interesting little story to go with it. And uh, you'll hear about how I got it and uh, what I think of it in a separate video. But spoiler alert, spoiler alert I love it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. I think I am looking for a white bobbin. So my apologies for the lack of action on the screen. Yes, I was looking for a white bobbin because this is my first time using it. So I had to, I didn't want to fill a bobbin. I just found one that I had already bought and I don't want to lose the bobbin it came with. So I just put it in a little storage drawer underneath 
And now I'm going to remove my layers in the photo and remove all those little light bulbs. And then I'm just going to add it back to each one as I sew. And I changed my angle so that you can see me doing this because this is literally the first time I've ever used this machine. I thought I better make sure that it's working right. So I just sewed on a little scrap of paper there. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew on my layout. So this, again, I don't cut out my process, so you'll see me do all of these, or almost all of them anyways. Uh, and I'm just using white thread. I didn't want to use black because I thought it would add, like the, the crosses already add contrast. I don't need to add contrast here. So the white thread adds texture, but not contrast. So it kind of blends in a little bit better than black thread would have. And I'm just trying to make sure that the light bulb is randomly angled with the pluses, which means sometimes on the left side, sometimes on the right side, sometimes towards the top and sometimes towards the bottom without any rhyme or reason and trying not to make it be exactly the same in like on two crosses that are beside each other. One of those stamped circles doesn't have a cross on it and that's because it is entirely covered up by my layers and photo. So I didn't bother adding a plus on that because it'll be entirely covered. So you see I'm just uh, sewing, I'm starting off of the circle and ending off of the circle so that the stitching goes, it looks kind of messy and but it's straight. And now this last one at the bottom doesn't actually need to be, um, to be sewn because it's only the little tip of it is there. So I'm, I am going to put a little smidgen of the light bulb showing there just so that it doesn't stand out as being so different from the others. And then, oops, I forgot one. So one of the great things about using these tiny little sewing machines is they're so lightweight and easy to use. So I just grabbed it, plugged it in and uh, ran, ran the light bulb through. And there we go. Oh, I actually ended up breaking my thread on this one. The tension was a little bit too tight. I just used the tension straight out of the box and it was set to four and I think I need it on three. My other one is set on four, but this one needs a tension of three, I guess. So now I am cutting these. I'm not cutting them like all the way to the, the edge of the paper. I'm leaving little tiny threads, maybe like less than a centimeter long. And now I'm cutting the back, the back threads, like the back side threads um, that hang. Just I only cut the ones that are at risk of peeking out and showing in the page protector. So the ones in the center I'm just leaving. And then I decided to go ahead and cover up my stitching because I don't do back stitching. So sometimes the threads start to come out if I handle a project a lot before it goes in my album. And I don't know how much this is going to be handled. So I thought I might as well err on the side of caution and uh, cover all those stitching up with washi tape. And I never did glue that you got this <laughs> embellishment from the little two by two paper pads. So I decided to do that now before it falls out. And I also glued on the piece of vellum with the stamping on it. And then I realized I had meant to actually stitch all the way around the outside of this one too, also in white thread. So I'm just going to do that. And I didn't bother changing my angle because it's pretty boring. You just position it and go all the way around. The one thing that I do though is as I turn the corner, I leave the needle in the thread, pick up the foot, twist the paper, and then start stitching again. So right here I leave the, I leave the needle in the, in the paper there. I think I might have said I leave the needle in the thread. I leave the needle in the paper, lift up the foot and and flip it around at 90 degrees and then keep on sewing. So there we go, almost finished. And I'm using a fairly tight stitch on this. It's number three on this machine, which, or I guess it's C, not three. So it's a very tight stitch. And now I'm going to put three of these wool dots up here as well. Kind of picks up on the wool dots on the bottom. And I'm liking how this looks. I'm just going to pull up. I, I, I just want to emphasize the layered effect of these pieces of vellum here. 
And so in order to do that, I'm just pulling up the edges of the pluses and of the light bulb circles so that you can really see and appreciate the pretty layers there. Especially where it's kind of like tone on tone with the gray on the black. I just want it to be a little bit more obvious that it is, um, that it's layered. Now I'm going to, sh I, I'm actually going to show that up close, but first this is in a bit of a funny order. So I actually did the close up video of that. And then I decided I wanted to add a title besides you got this. So I'm spelling out with the little letter stickers from Illustrated Faith, Illustrated Faith that came in the wild hair kit. I'm using the little circular letters to spell out grade seven and it didn't have numbers. So I'm actually spelling out the word seven and I'm going to put that right under those wool dots. And I used my thicker alignment tool for that. It didn't, it didn't work all that great. I think mostly because these layers, I had pulled up the layers thinking that I wanted them to be um, really curled up. And then once I put this title on here, I, I don't want it to be curled up anymore. So I just added some glue underneath of those layers to keep them flat. And now I'm using the little rectangular stickers that come in this letter set to spell out French immersion so that my title will be grade seven French immersion. And I'm using that thicker alignment tool and I'm spelling out for immersion and I'm not being all that careful about it being straight. And now I'm spelling out French and I had already accidentally pulled out a couple of letters that I need. So I just put them to the side and now French immersion is too long for where I want it to be. So I think I'll stack them and I'll have the whole thing be right justified against the edge of where my layers are. And so obviously my thicker alignment tool didn't work that great for the word French, but it worked perfectly for the word immersion. And as I was scooching up one of the letters, I tore the letter H. So I just replaced it with a new one and just trying to straighten them out and make them look kind of nice. And now I have this space in front of the word French that I want to fill up. And this is a perfect opportunity to add an accent color that picks up on the colors on that embellishment that says you got this. So I decided to go with pink because until this moment, most of this page was only blue and yellow and different shades of gray. And so um, I buy And so the accents that I added, you're not going to see in this because I filmed this part before I filmed the title. So see how this is how it looks without the title. When you see the photos, you'll get to see that those puffy stickers that add just a touch of pink really do a lot for this page. It makes that you got this embellishment look like it belongs more. So as you see it right here, the only colorful part on this is the you got this, the, that pattern that's around the outside of that square. And once I add those puffy stickers, it just it just pulls it together and makes it look like the you got this really does belong. And it adds a little bit of because the pink is used in such a tiny amount, it gives some really interesting, uh, well, some interest, I guess, <laughs> to this page. So here are the close ups. And there's the puffy sticker up in the top. I wanted to, to continue some of the pink up to the top if I put it in the bottom part. And those geotags around the journaling just emphasize the journaling and draw your eye around the page in that visual triangle where the journaling is. And I love the title. I love how those letter stickers look together with those puffy stickers. It's just so pretty. And the title is very subtle because it's tone on tone. It's the same color as the paper upon which it is laid. So thank you for letting me be a small part of your scrappy day. If you like this video, I'd love to hear from you. Please hit the like button, comment and subscribe. I post new content each week to inspire you and get you scrappy. So check out my other videos and have a great scrappy week.